Fit for Life Radio, episode number 177. Your hosts, Gary, here. Uh, and Will. You had to think about it for a second? I had to think about who I was. I was thinking about the fact that I'm glad you knew the episode number because I didn't. Mm-hmm. So thanks for being on top of that. Today we're going to be talking about the symbiotic relationship. That was good. Look at you with a $3 word. Of exercise and sleep. That's, that was the right usage of that word, right? That was. I'm going to say it was. Yeah. yeah. They, 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 go, they go together like peanut butter and jelly. Mm-hmm. Like, y- like you need both of them. Yep. And one thing that, there's two things. So one, there's an awesome research review we're going to share with you from uh, Precision Nutrition Research Insider. But then we also had, there was a post the other day where I, I was tongue in cheek a little posting about how, you know, there was the Love is Blind reunion. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you probably don't watch Love nah, is Blind. Bro. That, that's your trash TV, But, man. you know, we're all into it. And, yeah, and I even had it, you know, so they – actually, it was the first ever Netflix. Isn't it funny how everything comes full circle? So, like, the beauty of Netflix, right, you're streaming all yeah. this TV. You can watch it whenever. And, you know, they've had Love is Blind now on its third season. It's been really popular. This season's had a lot of momentum. Ironically, to me, this season had more – drama and trash which then f- seemed to be more popular right <laughs> so yeah so people it's like, it's that's like, why you watch it right yeah, it's and uh so then they decide hey you know the season's ended right now it's been a year since they recorded it, and then people are always interested in like where are they where are they so then they're like they had a live reunion show planned <sighs> dude that's a gamble for sunday at 8 p.m prime time and now, isn't it funny? Like, and the people are like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> it's like, hey, this is how it always used was, to be. Exactly. Like, well, this is how sports work. And basically, <laughs> TV <laughs> in general, always you had, hey, the show comes on at this time, yeah. be here or miss it. And yeah, so everyone's all s- squared up. And then, yeah, dude, it comes and it wasn't working. Like, you know, you turn it on and it was like, hey, Netflix was basically like, we're sorry, we're having technical difficulties. And, um, yeah, like they didn't get it going till like I ended up going to bed, but like that n- long nine thirty. Yeah. Oh. And I don't even know if it completely got solved. They essentially just recorded it. And did then, nobody work at Netflix that knows how live TV works? I mean, apparently, and do the. It's not like they're rein- they don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just yeah. do what they've always done. So there's that, right? But then, but then I saw too how like Twitter and Facebook and everyone's social media was blowing up, you know, and more funny memes and all this but it shows man a lot of people were invested in this yeah so then obviously i make a little post you know part of social media is creating discussion and a lack of nuance right yeah nuance is for the birds now i'll preface this with the most common thing we see like we get inquiries for the gym for coaching you know everything 30 to 80 inquiries a month, right? And most people don't go past that, right? They, and everyone's excuse always is, you know, hey, oh, you're interested, let's schedule something to chat. And, and or even when eventually people, maybe they're using something, using a gym and, and they aren't, aren't anymore, they're canceling. And the number one reason is I'm too busy. I don't have time. I don't have time. Um, so, and then the, the reality is, or at least from my experience, is we, we have time, it's, it's more what are our priorities, right? Yeah. And now, obviously, this show is on a Sunday at 8 p.m. Like, even me personally, I ain't doing nothing at 8. Yeah, right? no one's I'm doing going, anything at 8 on a Sunday. So, but I had a post that was like, hey, people will plan and schedule to watch a... Love is Blind. Love is Blind reunion at a specific time, but then exercise meal prep, a walk, well, I don't got time for that. Yeah. Right? I can't and the it. point more was like the overarching theme of people will plan and schedule something like a TV show, but they won't apply those things. They won't apply that prioritization of plan. Hey, let me plan and schedule these other things. Right? Yeah. Well, anyway, and then someone commented and they are like, hey, you know, big, it's not the time. It's not, it's, it's, people don't have the energy, right? So it was more kind of playing the counter and like, hey, being compassionate to, oh, maybe people are just, they're exhausted. They don't have energy. And it's, yeah, obviously watching TV is just easier. easier. Yeah. 
you know. But and the thing is, it's a bit cut the like. Well, sitting on the couch and watching TV will always be easier than anything, right? right. So if we it's if, a, if we start bottom of the barrel, <laughs> yeah, if we start to play that game, we're going to choose the easy part, yeah. right? But then the thing is, well. Energy is, is very complicated, right? You can actually yeah. have less energy and feel like crap because all you do is sit around on a couch, yeah. right? And when you, I mean, that's common in people that yeah. don't exercise or do anything. It's like, oh, my energy is terrible. Yeah. Well, and you're not spending it on anything. Mm -hmm. And when you exercise and eat better, guess what happens? You get a little energy, baby. You gain energy. So it's this, you know. That's like number one. People, you know, because I interact with all of our, our new people, people are like, I have so much energy. Now that they yeah. went from zero yeah. to just something. It's not yeah, like they're coming six days a week. They just come a couple days and they feel yeah. freaking awesome. And it's not like a made up thing. Like we have mitochondria ourselves. I mean, yeah. go, go back it's the to, house of the cell. to high school and take, bi yeah, take <laughs> biology. <laughs> and, all anybody remembers. and exercise and what we eat affects that, right? So it's there's legit stuff to this. So, you know, in general, that's not doing people a favor by like saying, oh, it's okay, you, you didn't have energy, right? But anyways, that's not the point. The point was more, but then this also triggered those thoughts. And then this study comes out, which we see, and we're like, hey, this would be perfect to tie into and talk about, Let's which talk is about it. the relationship between sleep and exercise. And then the study actually goes into like things like mortality and stuff. But ultimately, and a lot of people have probably experienced this anecdotally firsthand, when they start exercising, they start sleeping better. Mm -hmm. And when they sleep better, you have more energy, right? And then you want to do these things. And then it's this beautiful loop, right? It makes everything easier so, when you sleep well. And sometimes you just have to fight through, get off the couch, get over the hump, so to speak, and then you open up. There's always that little bit of resistance that mm -hmm. you got to kind of push through. You know, I don't like to tell people you have to rely on willpower all the time, but like, when you're starting something and going from nothing to something, you're always going to have to push through yeah. the discomfort yeah. and just make yourself do it. Yeah. And it's not easy, right? Sitting on the couch is easier, and straight up. And it's all a cycle, right? Like, if you reinforce those behaviors, let me plan a schedule, to this TV show, and sit on the couch because it's, it's easy, then you're reinforcing that cycle. Whereas, again, when you exercise and it helps you sleep better, and then when you sleep better, you have more energy for exercise. And you just feel better. It's a no-brainer. Yeah, you feel better. You have more energy for exercise. And it's this mutually beneficial cycle that, you, of, that you're now reinforcing. Beautiful dance. So, and, and, we, and again, if you have poor sleep, and here's the thing with sleep. Sleep is, it is harder to control because yeah. you could have a newborn baby, right? Yeah, that, so in that stage of your of life, factors. you're going to have poor sleep. So yeah. then that's where you're falling back on your behaviors and habits comes into play. And so, you know, or you could be starting a new job or you could work night shift. Um, so, yes, yeah, so th there's definitely things that can cause an uphill battle with sleep, right? And then having poor sleep can lower our motivation to exercise. Um, so... But again, that now that that's the loop, right? So then we do end up talking ourselves out of it and then on the couch. And then again, now having this virtuous loop, negative feedback loop, right? Um, but we do what well, we know. We, we know there's this positive relationship between the two, right? So if you can get into that state um, of that a more functional relationship of exercise and sleep, and having this good relationship, what are the positive effects on your health, right? Now, we, we know we feel them, like, in the short term, mm -hmm. too. But essentially, this new study tested it out. And it's, yeah, it's a very cool study. You know, if you've listened to our podcast and our beliefs and the way we set up our program at our gym, you know, with... Uh, We've done episodes before on kind of the recommended, you know, exercise. Um, Your dosages. Dosages, guidelines, so to speak. So like the the WHO guidelines, um, you're, you'll be familiar. And this this is what they base it off of. So this is even good. This is starting to pile evidence on. But yeah, they uh, uh, essentially attempted to quantify the longevity cost of this sleep exercise pairing, right? So now what, yeah, what is optimal exercise and sleep? So what do they do? So the recommendations for exercise 
R. These are considered the best known exercise guidelines. Get at least 150 minutes a week of moderate to vi uh, vigorous physical activity. And you, again, you can go back to our old episodes. We break this down. What they consider, they use these things called met units. So technically, a moderate is literally just a walk. It could be, they even break it down essentially like a, a brisk walk. So like three miles per hour. Yeah. Um, could make up all of that, right? It could be walking, or if you did something more vigorous, so like a uh, a bike ride, or a really uh, uphill walk, or like a light jog. Um, that those kind of efforts then fall into the vigorous category, and you technically get more bang for your buck. So you actually don't need as many minutes of that. You can be so, at the bottom end of yeah, that. Yeah, it's kind of like a point system. But and I have social media posts on this, but essentially like a good breakdown is if you do a I think I have it as like a tw if it's, it's like a 20 minute walk or maybe even a 30 minute walk somewhere between there every day and then like one 10 minute vigorous activity. So it could be like a high intensity workout finisher, you know, air sprints on the bike, um, just something like that. Then that essentially helps you meet those 150 met minutes uh, a week that we're after. So it's not nothing crazy, but obviously you're moving your body some. Exactly. So and then. In addition to that is two, a recommendation for two full body sessions of strength training a week. All right. And that one's not as well known, but it is on there. It is listed. It is part of it. Right. So to meet the total guidelines, you need to meet those 150 hours a week minutes. of activity plus the minutes of or plus the two full body strength yeah. training workouts. All right. So that's what they're considering. Um, and then for sleep, pretty straightforward. They're using the U.S. National Sleep Foundation recommendations, which is seven to nine hours per night for adults younger than 65 and seven to eight hours for those 65 and older. In general, the farther one gets from those ranges in either direction, the worse it is for your long-term health. And we'll see how this plays out in the study. Yeah. Um, but yes, too much sleep is typically a bad, thing. a bad thing. All right. So the study had people self-report their exercise and sleep data from 282,473 American adults. It's a good size. And then they followed up with them. And about 7% of them died during the follow-up period. Damn, 7%. Okay, so let's see how people broke down in these categories and then, you know, what your mortality rates are. So then they broke it down. You had active, which means you met the standards for both aerobic and resistance exercise, which, like we said, is like two strength training workouts a week and essentially a 30-minute walk a day will hit that. Yeah, which, right? you know, they, that's enough. We're good. Then they had the AER group, which is you met the standard for aerobic exercise only. So essentially the walking, biking minutes only. Yep. Then they had the MSA group, which was the you met the standard for the muscle strengthening activities so only. The two days a week of strength So training. you only lifted and you didn't walk. You didn't do anything. <laughs> do nothing else. Then the inactive group did not meet either standard. Nothing. Love is blind. That's it. Yeah. Then for sleep, there's three categories. Rec recommended, so you got the recommended amount for your age. Short, you got less than seven hours a night. Long, you got more than nine hours a night. All right, so with all that, so there's three possible sleep things, four possible activity things, 12 possible combinations. What did they find? So as you would assume, the active and recommended sleep group, so that combination, so you met both activity standards. The strength, the aerobic. And you got the recommended sleep, seven to nine hours. They had the lowest risk of dying from any cause during the follow-up period. Here's the thing. Only 12% of the participants hit that trifecta. So only 12% were getting seven to nine hours of sleep, strength training twice a week, and hitting those 150 aerobic minutes. Compared to that group, 
Almost everyone else had a higher mortality risk. The only other exception, which was pretty good, just as good, was the active. So they were doing both. Short sleep. Yep. So actually getting so get less than the optimal Less than the sleep. seven hours of sleep. Actually, is if you're active, then it seems Still not terrible. to have any negative consequence on mortality. Um, so the, a recap on each category. If you know me, you know I'm always on the run, up early and home late. So having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because it was, I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop mixed in water once a day and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high-quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash proven grit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. If you know me, you know I'm always on the run up early and home late, so having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because it was, I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop mixed in water once a day and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high-quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash provengrit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. Most people met the standard for sleep duration. So 65% of the participants fell into the recommended sleep, seven to nine hours. 30% fell short, and 5% were, were long. Okay? Now, like we said, the short sleep, if you're active, wasn't really related to higher risk of mortality. The interesting thing, though, was the long sleep group, which, again, was only 5%, was consistently linked to higher mortality rates. Um, even those who hit both exercise standards still had a 40% higher risk of premature death if they also slept longer than nine hours. The thing with that, though, is that was less than 1%. It was actually 0.45%. Yeah. So in general, you can see a connection of if you're exercising, it really helps you sleep optimally, yeah. right? It's very rare that someone exercised and slept way, way too long. So, and you can break this more down in deeper sleep stuff in that. So yeah, exercise helps us get better quality sleep. So we get into that deep REM and yeah, we get kind of what we need when, and the interesting thing you'll see, because half the people were inactive, and that made up almost all the people 
of the long sleep group. So you see when you're inactive, you have this like long, probably you're just in bed and you're not even getting deep restorative sleep. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of negative connotations, right? So you see, start to see this like symbiotic relationship of exercise and proper sleep. Yeah. Um, and it's strongly correlating to long-term health mm -hmm. mortality outcomes. Um, so th then with that, the exercise groups, 18% fell into the active, so meeting both standards. 26% fell into the aerobic only. 3.5% fell into the muscle strengthening only. And a whopping 51% fell into inactive. Damn. They were, they did not meet either standard. And we've been over this before, and this is just from these percentages from this study. On a general population level, it's pretty much known to actually be more than that. Yeah, that is. are not meeting these standards. Um, and then the crazy thing is, and we talk about this all the time, is the all or nothing, right? People fall into, like, you have this percentage of the population who think, they need to be like these fitness professionals and, and athletes and like, I need to do all the exercise, right? Every day, all day, as much as I can. Yes. And if they can't, well, then I'll just do nothing. Why do, yeah, why even do it? And we, but, s we see the problem with nothing when the reality is you get almost all the benefits for our health and longevity. With the minimums. From this amount of like, hey, let's get at least two resistance training workouts and these 150 move minutes. You get like, minutes. I don't know, let's call it 90% effectiveness from doing two. Yeah. Two strength workouts and some aerobic stuff. Yeah. And if you want to do more, fine, but make sure you can consistently execute the minimum effective dose. Yep. Because you get v like diminishing returns as you go up, right? As you do five, six days a week, two a days, you get diminishing returns. And sometimes we start to get negative returns when you're absolutely just doing too much. Yeah. So there's, you know, nothing that says we need to be beast mode all the time. Be cool with the minimum. It's fine, especially if other parts of your life are not optimal. Yeah. And again, so ultimately from the study, participants who are classified as inactive and in long sleep were more than twice as likely to die from the f in the follow-up period. So what we're saying is you should probably move a little bit. Yeah. Just a touch. Yeah. Just a little bit. And again, the, the numbers and percentages of people who fell into the dangerous long sleep category we're so much higher with the inactive group, right? Mm -hmm. And then the active people who fell into the doing both, the complete active group, whether they were recommended sleep or even short sleep, they were Gucci. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so really, even if your sleep is not perfect, maybe you don't have the ability at this time to get a full eight hours for whatever reason. As long as you're getting your, your minimums of exercise, like you're cool. Yeah. That, so that should be a priority. And here's the other thing. There's direct benefit of on all cause mortality. Like, which means anything. This stuff is important. And it's, it's the big rocks. You know, people will worry about this minutia, you know. Or, yeah, like, I'm too tired, but let me schedule a time to watch a TV show. When the reality is, like, the length of our mortality and the vigor that we even can have is dependent on our activity levels. So maybe, just maybe, we should schedule that. Yeah. And, and, I, and, and prioritize. And it. then know too, like, there's some days where, you know, you're, well, not, you're not 100% there. Hey, and that's whatever. We're only talking about two. Exactly. Two strength workouts. Two, that's it. And some walks. The walk you can do for free and right from your house. Yep. Or at work, on your lunch break, yeah. or anything like and that. And two, two things. Two th you can get a, we, at our gym, we do 45 minute workouts. You could do a 30. You can knock it out in 30. 30 minute, really. You're talking an hour a week of something to schedule probably to go, hey, I need to go do this exercise. Mm -hmm. And then, and then plus the, the 150 minutes, right? Of, which could just be walking. So all in all, it's not that much. Yeah. When you spread it out across a week and think about, you know, I know on your post that you put, um, that people should like consider their phone usage and oh that was another on another day yeah so it's playing into like hey when you catch yourself saying that and I do it with certain things right yeah, now we, luckily we all do it. I prioritize my health and fitness so I get that done but you know it could be I need to fold laundry right and I don't have time when the reality is like you can pull up your you app usage on your phone yeah how long was I on Instagram <laughs> and today? see in the week 
how many hours you've been on your phone on an mm -hmm. app. And, and it just puts it in perspective yeah, for you. That's all it is. Yeah, so. So, so that's a good thing to do if you're like, man, I don't have any time. Check in on that kind of stuff, yeah. too, because it's usually there. Yeah. And al so ultimately, look, you need to do some physical activity, whether you're walking or riding a bike or swimming mm -hmm. or, you know, like do something, you know, do some resistance training. Um, exercise is really good for you. And this is another important thing why we like to harp on. Th you should always keep exercise separate from weight loss, right? Because if you start attaching it and, and then you develop negative connotation because you're not losing weight while you started exercising, and then you, you exercise poorly, that's a problem, right? No. Exercise is amazing. It's really good for you. It's good for you now. It's good for you when you're older. More can be better. Anything is better than nothing. Yes. You have to avoid nothing. And a little goes all, can go a long oh, way. Oh, a very long way. Right? So, now, yes, if you do two strength training workouts a week and 150 minutes, would three strength training workouts and 200 minutes be better? Possibly. But yeah. again, like Will said, that's going to scale to the diminishing returns. Yeah. It's not... Four workouts is double. Two workouts. Two workouts is so that people get stuck the in two that workouts was ninety percent of the of the mojo and gains, and then the double was an extra five percent. Exactly. Right. right. Which if you do it, you enjoy it. You can work it in. You can schedule it. You can be consistent. It's great. Awesome. But make sure it can be consistent. So it that's lines why it's up with your life. Yeah. You want to have that baseline. So. Yeah, I, I think that's a good distinction to make. I'm glad you said that about, you know, how yeah. diminishing the returns really yep. are. Um, so, yeah, like, you, you, you exercise, and like we said, then it's going to directly correlate to improve sleep, which then improves sleep means we have more energy, which then means we'll have more motivation to work out. So it is a loop. you got to get into this loop, mm -hmm. get into this flow. And sometimes it's gutting it out and making sure you get it in, yeah. even if it's only your, your two days. Another good takeaway is not everyone needs the same amount of sleep. No. So we know the official recommendation is seven to nine hours. And so obviously a law of averages and all this. So, yeah, in, in a theory, like in the middle of that, eight hours, eight which hours. is normally the general, you know, what everyone's heard of is probably a safe bet. But... For some people, it may not be needed, right? Mm -hmm. um, you may be able to get by on less sleep. So typically in working with people over the years, I've met plenty of people in, who are good with six. Yep. You know, now most people when they're getting less than six, it's way more rare, I've noticed, yeah. that people f are like feeling great and Anything functioning well. Anything under that generally is not the best for, for most. Yeah, but understand there could be the perfect amount for you, may, may be more somewhere in that six to eight mm -hmm. range, and then we see from this, too much sleep is the bigger worry yep. than less sleep. Yeah, if you're sleeping nine, ten hours a night. Yeah, if you're able to do that, there's probably weird things going and on. And the, like, the, the effects of that, I mean, on a lot of things, your mental health, you're more likely to have heart problems, you're more likely to have um, really any chronic disease yeah. um, is associated with that. Not just yeah. like, hey, you're going to sleep and then it's going to cause you to have a, a heart attack, but it's just associated with that. So... You know, there is a lot that goes on, I think, when you have too much sleep. Yeah. And personally, anecdotally, myself, working with people, and sleep's important, but if you have your nutrition dialed in and your exercise, again, you kind of, it's a habit and you get it done, like, poor sleep has never held me back from the results I was looking for, mm -hmm. right? Like, whether I, if I was, like, dieting or trying to, you know, um, gaining muscles way different process, but as far as like maintaining my weight and what I needed to get done and my physique, or even if it was a phase where I had to lose, like if I'm hitting my calories, if I'm hitting my nutrition, those things fall into place. Now it may be a little harder mm -hmm. on less yeah, sleep, a little uphill. Um, but ultimately, and again, the bigger takeaway is that the, the probably the mo the thing that matters the most is how you function on the amount of sleep you get. Yep. So you have, as with anything, you just got to be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're getting five hours of sleep and feeling groggy and, and brain foggy, like you're not fun like you're, you're that's not, functioning not well. serving you. Right. So again, for most people aim for that 
Probably aim for seven to eight yeah. or six to, we'll say six to eight and see how you feel. Mm -hmm. So like I know me personally, there's times like in general, getting in bed by nine, waking up at five, but truthfully normally get in bed and then get eventually get in bed and fall asleep by like 9 15 mm -hmm. normally maybe go upstairs at nine brush teeth nine. but normally on average i know i'm definitely asleep by 9 15 and then normally wake at like f which is good on my own between 4 45 and 5. Mm -hmm. so really if it say it's 4 45 then i am i know i i consistently probably get what's that se uh seven and some change right? seven and some change right yeah so, and, and truthfully when i have longer than eight I don't feel as yeah, good. I feel like trash if I get too much sleep. Yeah. Like I, I usually get about seven mm -hmm. most nights. That's usually where I where I end yeah, up. Yeah. That's my sweet um, spot. And I, I even have sometimes I wake up at four thirty or. But mm -hmm. yeah. So for me, between seven and eight is where I like to be. Yeah. Anything lower than that, I, I don't can, feel good. I feel it yeah. the next day. I'm just not as sharp. Um, a little more anxious. Really hungry. So yeah. I'm not a fan of. Yeah. Not getting enough personally. Yeah, so there you go. There's a perfect example. The recommendation is 7 to 9. I know for me individually, it's between 7 and 8 is ideal. Mm -hmm. So, again, but what we do know, if you're active and you get a short or recommended amount of sleep, you are making good benefit. You, you have a good odds of maximizing your mortality risks. Yep. If you are inactive, you're not you're in trouble yeah as far as your mortality mortality risk seems to raise from this study and then if you're inactive and you have the long sleep double whammy right yeah so, maybe so that was double doing, start doing a little something double the risk so there you go there's that cycle that relationship between sleep and exercise there's a again this is a newer study piling on to what we've talked about of the benefits of meeting this like minimum effective dose of activity mm -hmm. um and yeah, we like to keep it simple and actionable. And we feel th we've always felt passionate about this, but even more so because we, we're in the trenches. We see, we see people, it every day. We see people who they can't come to the gym five days a week, so they cancel. And again, it's not about canceling our gym. No. Like we, you know, we always have new interests, new clients. Come. It's more like, man, like, and we'll even suggest to people, hey, why don't you try coming twice a week? And it's just not even considered. People, they'll scoff at it. Yeah, right? like, oh, that's not worth that's it. That's not going to be worth it. Yeah, when the reality is like, no, well, this this is everything. Like, you're going from, like, great benefits yes. to none. Yes. You get nothing with no activity. Zero. You get nothing. You get net, you're getting net negative. Yeah. Whereas yeah. You, you get can, more sleep. <laughs> you come two days a week and get some walks in, net positive. Yep. We're Ma doing great. Majority net positive. If you and do double than that, you're only getting... A little better, which can be fine if you, you know, I do more than the yes, minimum. So do I. But I but also I can also fall back on the minimum yes. if I need to, yep. and I'm completely and cool with it. There's no guilt. There's no shame. Yep. That's the baseline, right? So, man, that's the hard part. Yeah, and then stuff like this, you're like, there's, I mean, there it is. For me personally, cool. I'll add that. Like I, it's the I'm on track. Even more reassuring. Yeah. Even yeah, more reassuring. So there you are. So all we're saying, do a little activity. Go for a walk. Get your two strength workouts, 30, 45 minutes, yep. and do your best to sleep yep. as well as you can. And look, we understand, too, that strength component of that is overwhelming for a lot of people. Yeah. That's why we started Coastal Strength and Fitness because we like to say we took that resistance training part of the gym that people were scared to go into, put it in an environment that they're comfortable, you have a coach, because so, a lot of times it's like, am I doing this right? Yeah. What should I do when I get there? Yeah. Or I don't know the equipment's available. <laughs> yeah. None of the equipment's available. So right there, we take those three obstacles and eliminate them all. them, baby. You're going to get the workout we want. Everything's available because we have it set up. You're going to go through how we, how we, how it's designed. There's a coach there. Um, and the environment is quote unquote safe, right? You're yeah. not going to have like some college power lifter, like, intimidating you anything like that it's an environment that that people can then be consistent and enjoy coming to so we have that we have the so the gym in newport news virginia and then we also have an online um program where it's basically the workout so it's like hey if you have your gym membership your planet fitness whatever but you get there you get overwhelmed mm -hmm. this is a little thing you pull it up on your phone there's videos yeah. and descriptions videos descriptions questions here's your sets and reps 
here's what you can do yep. while you're at the gym. Exactly. And it even has, we even have, so it's actually three strength days. Yep. If you can get two in, great. Like you can mm -hmm. just skip one of the other ones. And then there's some little high intensity cardio. And then it has on a lot of the days reminders and encouragement to get a walk in, yep. right? So it's built around helping you hit these activity standards. Um, and that you can check it out. There's, there's a seven day free trial. So you can see how the functionality works and if you like it. And there's a link to that in the show notes as well. Yep. All right. Well, we appreciate you for listening. Yep. We'll catch you next time. See ya. As always, thanks for listening, guys. If you want to learn more, check us out at CoastalFitnessVA.com or GaryDeagle.com. We'll see you next time.